Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here and welcome to the start of the league season, second season here with Adelaide United in my improving Australian football, Football Manager 2014 story. And if those are wondering why this one is called a story and other ones are let's plays, because it's kind of a challenge and there's going to be a story behind it with the method, like what I want to do with this, multiple things, but... Yeah, in terms of improving Australian football, there's the story behind that. But I have made another transfer, and you know I made transfers in the last episode, but also the regens, uh, our youth intake. And speaking on that, I did actually sign up another regen, Ricky Ferguson. You can see here, he looks pretty good for a 17-year-old, doesn't he? Uh, he's going to be a very, very good player. And he actually came from Lang Warren Soccer Club here. And that's what SC stands for, if anyone wondering. But yeah, that's why they called it soccer in Australia. For people that know, <laughs> why do people in Australia call it soccer? It's That's why. But I call it football. But anyway, yeah, he came from there, so it's like a semi-professional team. So yeah, you're still going to get these kind of players every season that do have a good potential. So I want to add to that by improving the teams in the league. Uh, but yeah, I want to see if the Australian Institute of Sport actually created or yeah came through with any regens. I'm not really sure if they did or not. I'll go to, yeah, clubs. I'll just put nation. There it is. They should have some regions coming through, do they? Actually, I'm not sure if they do. I don't think so. Do they have you squad? They don't. They just have one. They just have the senior squad. Northern Rangers FC? They're, like, listed on the same one. But, yeah, um, I don't know. It's hard to find there, but anyway, I guess not. But anyway, like as I was saying, Ricky Ferguson uh, got my scouts going to all like, to scout Australia, really, other clubs, not in the A-League, just in the whole Australia, like local clubs and that. And yeah, he actually was one with a high report. Uh, so right away, I had to sign him up, and it was so cheap. Well, I signed him on approach to sign. It was just like 3.2K compensation, which I think is very, very low. But coming from an Australian team, it's going to be low. And yeah, he can be a very good player. Looking at his attributes, he is good enough, I think. Like, if I play him, he's generally just going to keep getting better. And right now, just working on his passing, because that's just eighth. And I think for a central midfielder, if he's going to be really, really good, his passing has to be a higher level. He has to, yeah, increase. But yeah, dribbling, crossing, finishing. Uh, he seems like a decent player. Either uh, playing as a box-to-box -box midfielder, you can see that's one of his better roles as a center mid. Or even if I play him as a advanced playmaker, he could play in that role as well potentially. But again, like I said, need to improve his passing ability uh, to create. But I'm yeah really happy about the signing of him. And then of course finally, uh, where is he? Yeah, Franjic, Petar Franjic. He's injured right now though, but he did in fact join eventually uh, when his contract was up. So I was just able to register all these players. And my squad, I'm happy with my squad. It's really, really balanced. Got a mix of experience and youth and just talent in general. So I'll give you an overview of the squad registration right now. It says maximum squad size of 23 players, and we have the 23, so we can't sign any more. We have the maximum of five foreign players. Uh, we have 18 out of the maximum 20 of over 20 players. Uh, we've got two goalkeepers, as the minimum is. And yeah, the maximum squad salary is still 31000 per week, of course, excluding marquee players. I wonder if that actually increases. I think in older games it has. Like, I haven't really played this save for a long time in depth. I um, mean, a couple last years, but yeah, I can't really remember correctly. But anyway, you can see it's 30591 And the max, see how close it is to the maximum? It's real. I really, I did the best I can. That's what I mean about the squad building skills. I reckon I couldn't do better. Really maximizing my talent. Um, really got an amazing marquee play in Ruben Rachina, who's on thirty, yeah, thirteen point seventy five k per week, and yeah, got that done as the marquee. So those wages don't count in the salary cap. That's almost half of that. That's what I mean. That's almost half of that. And then of course, uh, we picked up Carl Valeri. And he's on 8.5k a week, and he's the Australian marquee. So two of them together will be like 20k, and then I would only have 10k left. So uh, yeah, definitely they would have to be signed as marquee players, or we wouldn't be able to have them in the club. Any crucial players, but uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's all 
on that. And of course, yeah, some of the youth players I signed up, they would have made the grade here. And there's also one guy that has sparked my attention right now, uh, Adam uh, Piscioneri. Um, again, I have no idea why I'm trying to say his name fancy, but anyway, yeah, Adam uh, Piscioneri, I think. Oh, I don't even know how to say his name. He must be Italian or something. Uh, well, it doesn't say it, but his parents is probably or something like that. And he actually has good potential. He's got potential to be a star, another one to be in star in the league. So he could be okay. I'm not really sure. Uh, I think he's got a cap in the under-19s. Where do we go to see a cap to under-19 level? So we see how he develops as a player. But yeah, the other striker that we got that came through, where he is, yeah, this guy, Matthew uh, Mahevic. Again, uh, again, if you know how to say his name, drop in the comments because I don't really know how to pronounce that name. Does it say if he's from another country? Nah, so I can't tell you where that name originates from. Uh, but yeah, leave your thoughts if you know. But right now, we have to go in. We have to go in, start of the season. I'll just be playing one game here, then yeah, I'll continue to do two from there. Because yeah, I talked about the lead-up stuff. And you can see I have a lot of players, well... I think I just have two injuries, yeah, uh, Peter Franic and Bruce Jitte, but a lot of them have got international call-ups, the younger players, Mabil, Maling, Izzo, and Corey Brown. Uh, so you can see here, this is basically the starting team for now. It was only I had to do a lot of rotating because it was hard, actually, to get the best players in because I wanted to have this Ricky Ferguson guy on the bench, the young talent we signed, but he can't even make the bench. That's why it's going to be hard. And Bayic, he's starting as a wing position. I'm going to bring on Karuska. Well, see, he wasn't even in. I just did quick pick before. So, yeah, I think uh, Bayic is good for the bench because he can come left back and left wing. And he got Hingert right back and left back even as well. Uh, Jimmy Jago. And Hingert also, he could play right midfield and left midfield. So if you go defend, he can come in there because then the wingers go there. They just push down there instead. As you know, if you've watched up till now. And then we've got Jimmy Jago, the central midfielder. He can play all those three midfield positions, like defensive midfield, center mid, or attacking mid. And then same with Seleski as well. Similar type, but more experienced. You know he's fantastic, but he's hard to get in. It's hard to play him above Valeri and, of course, Rachina. See? And then you've got Bayic, like I talked about. Aziz. I like his name, Aziz. <laughs> That's a good name. But anyway, we'll go on. And we'll see how we go. See how we can start here. Can we start the same as we did last season? On fire. I think I have. I can't remember how much I won in a row. It was like 11 or something. At least 10. Because I remember having 10 wins in a row. But this is where the season starts. And actually, uh, Western Sydney Wanderers got Rogic. I would imagine on loan. Yeah, on loan from Celtic. Uh, I almost got him, but it was too early. I wanted to get him on loan before yeah the window opened. And I couldn't. So I just yeah went for other signings. It uh, looks like they're still playing the same kind of formation. Didn't really go well for them last season, so I wouldn't be expecting too much from them. So Rogic, uh, Aaron Moy, Haliti, and Nathan Burns. They saw Nathan Burns as well. He's not that good. I'll hard tackle them. If I go to Nath, yeah, Nathan Burns, he is, he is a bit of pacey, a kind of pacey player, but I feel as though he doesn't, like, there was opportunity for me to sign him. That's what I mean. He's actually their Australian marquee. Or he's just the market. They haven't utilized it correctly. This is what I mean. Uh, the CPU control teams are dumb, and they they can't manage the squad as well as you do. I know you might think that sounds stupid, but it's true. Like a lot of the time, they don't manage their team well, and they end up as seasons go by, their teams are pretty bad because they don't know how to manage the salary properly, as yeah, as well as a human controlled player. Uh, so yeah, if I go to, can I go registration for them? Huh. Okay, that's weird. See, they have a junior marquee. Who would that be then? Nathan Burt? No, I don't. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to figure it out here. Who's the junior marquee? Hmm. But anyway. That looks a bit fishy, because it says, eh, oh, I can't find him anyway, so, yeah, you got Daniel Mullen, no, oh, sorry, I was just looking at this uh, pole lens guy uh, here, but anyway, forget about that, yeah, Nathan Burns is the 
marquee player. And then they got Dan Mullen as the Australian marquee. So I just wanted to, yeah, I wanted to balance that out. I just wanted to realize what was happening with them, uh, why they had Australian play as the marquee. Maybe they didn't have anyone as good on the high. Maybe see he's on the highest wages, but I won't go through it all because you probably think it's boring me checking that out right now. And you just want me to get into the game. So I'm just going to say I'm expecting you to win tonight, boys. This is huge. It's really important to keep our dominance up. Like, of course, last season I won in the grand final and I qualified for the Asian Champions League. But Asian Champions League is not going to be played yet. I don't even know when it starts. Yeah, I have to. I'll just play through and then we'll realize to see how it goes. But yeah, it's definitely not yet. But we are in the group stages. We qualified for that through winning the grand final. But we've got to keep that up. We've got to keep doing that every year. That's the thing. Because you can say, oh, you already achieved. You already qualified for the Asian Champions League. And it's not going to start for quite some time. Because you qualify for the following year. It's kind of difficult to explain. But anyway, I'm not happy. We have done nothing. Carl Valeri, what are we going to do? I'll say I have faith in him. I uh, didn't change. But yeah, like I said, it's going to be a big challenge. And yeah, leave in your thoughts. What is the best way to increase the reputation of the league? To me, it really can't be done just by domestic wins. I don't reckon that's a huge... Like, you improve the reputation of the league. It must be uh, in yeah Champions League competition. It has to be. Uh, but anyway, we're going to have to go attack. It's it's not going... Yeah, we have to change to fluid. Make a more fluid game here. Valeri will come off. We'll bring on Seleski, the man who's done it before. Jack Hingert will come on for Morone. Maybe that just a bit of pace at the back. And yeah, Aziz uh, will come left wing. I was just thinking about that for a second, yeah, if that's the best option. But something definitely needs to be changed here. Has not been a good game at all. And you can see there Aziz Bayic gaining confidence. We'll see what happens in the final 20 minutes. But this is familiar. Like start of the season. Scrappy match and scrappy goal, of course, to be scored uh, by the opposition here. You can see uh, I'm pretty disappointed about that. It was own goal as well, I think, said Seleski. Check the replay. But yeah, whoever scored it is a disappointment. And that is a disappointment to concede. But yeah, that this is always for me. It's like a toss of the coin who wins this game. Like it's really even. We both didn't have clear chances. We both played averagely. Uh, it's a very big disappointment to lose here. I'm not sure if we can score. If we could, would be nice. Seleski. Finish. Oh, we, they don't deserve to win. This is not a deserving win for them. That's disappointing. And again, I'm not too concerned. Just make the team get a good reaction there. Uh, but yeah, it's a far cry from what happened in last season. We started well, and here we lose in the first game. But Brisbane are, are back on. They, they look good. But as I said... Oh, goals, Geronimo. But yeah, you shouldn't it shouldn't count like that. When it's a new season, it's fresh. Don't worry how long he went on a run of not scoring last season towards the end. He still plays an important part of yeah, important part of the team. I was gonna talk about his passing there, that's why I said that. But yeah, his passing, it's a crucial part, and he's not just a goal scorer, he creates as well. Uh, I've taught him to play left wing, just so he can rotate. Like if we're not scoring, I can just bring Rachina there in the striking position, who's obviously a talent. And actually, I said I wasn't going to do another game, but because, you know, I don't like to lose, I'll play another game here. Next game at home to Perth Glory. We need to look to turn it around. Hopefully, that is just an early season slip-up uh, where your team is still jelling and tactic getting fluid. You can see here, it's definitely not 100%. Just a couple areas that are fluid in closing down and marking, or actually passing style as well. So just three, 
uh, other areas looking to uh, work on, but it's not like it's horrible. They're accomplished, yeah, accomplished and competent. So yeah, it's not like it's bad. So yeah, we shouldn't be using that excuse really why we are not doing well or yeah why we lost in the first game. Yeah, we just really we weren't playing our natural game. That's the truth. Uh, so I'm making a little bit of a change here. The new signing uh, of the region, Ricky Ferguson. You know, I talked about him. Signs him really cheap, uh, 3.2K. And we'll be looking for him. He could be the next star. Who knows? He could be national team quality. It's hard to really tell because there's no higher league. Like, it's not like this guy is going to be a star Premier League player. It's not like he has that potential. But it's definitely five star for the A-League potential. But how high does it go? It's hard to judge. That's the only downside of playing in the A-League. You can't actually get a true indication of their actual potential, like how high it is. But I guess we're going to see a bit of it today. Uh, he's getting a starty de- yeah, starting debut for us. And definitely, Rachina, he needs to lift. He needs to be a star for us, getting that kind of money. He needs to be dominant every single game. Yeah, so we have to give a number to Ricky Ferguson here. I think I'll give him number 14. There we go. And we need to get good form, especially. I need to get a a style going, sort of. When Especially for the Asian Champions League. We need to be dominant in the league week in, week out to stand a chance in the Asian Champions League. We need to be, Yeah, we do need to be playing at that level. So here we're going to be tackling some players. Uh, Risden, Jamison. Okay, who's this guy? Ruben Hare. Oh, he's a regen. So, yeah, they're playing a regen, a centre-back regen. So, hopefully, we can look to exploit that. Whoa, look at this guy's name. And he's a regen as well. What's his second country? Sudan, like I talked about last time. Oh, I, oh, I'm lucky this guy is not in my... T- he's Sir, look at that. Okay, I'm going to try and say his name. <laughs> it's, oh, my God. It's too hard. What is it? Okay, Ehab Sir... Al Katim Abdul Kabir. What a name. There's a name for you. <laughs> That's probably the greatest name I've seen in Football Manager. I haven't seen one that crazy. How much? One, two, three, four. Yeah, five names there. Ehab Sir Al Katim Abdul Kabir. <sighs> like I said, there's a name for you. And like I said about the Sudanese, tall, 189 centimeters for a 16-year-old. And he's got the strength and quickness. At least they have that correct, because the majority of them are like that. But, yeah, interesting. And he and they've got a Greek on the bench as well. But anyway, we'll go straight in. But it's good it has that diversity, that football manager care enough, or the creators of the game, Sports Interactive, to get that right. Uh, the kind of nationalities that are common in Australia. So uh, that's really good. It's reflected with the regions. Uh, okay, avenge what happened last time. Glad that showed up. That could help motivate the team. But yeah, I'm really pumped up. Ricky Ferguson, the debut of a potential star for the Socceroos. We'll see if he can make an impact. We'll see here. Oh, good tackle there. That was uh, Bogard. He's looking for another good season. We're going to need him to. Come on, Rachina. Show your talent. He's an ex-Barcelona youth player. Oh, Ferguson plays in Sirio. And he almost scored. And you think uh, Rachina and Sirio were able to link up well, you would think, being both Spanish. Oh, here's a chance, maybe Sirio. Early chance, but yeah, you would imagine they would. Oh, Karuska. It hits the wall. <laughs> not, that's not his best effort. Come on, Morone. Cassio still getting a game. Karuska. But yeah, if we're bad defensively again, I might look to drop Cassio and bring Bayic in left back. Yeah, like er, these early stages, it's all about testing your team. Uh, good save there, Galekovic. And yeah, as I mentioned before, getting ready for the Asian Champions League, making sure we're playing well consistently every single game once that time rolls around. But yeah, even in games we don't play well, we still grind out results. That's important as well. And there he is. Who's that? Geronimo. So I still did want to keep Geronimo. I didn't want to let him go because he was on that marquee to allow Rachina. I just want to offer him a contract not being the marquee anymore. So Karuska whipped that in and Rachina was there as well if Geronimo wasn't. So yeah, because Geronimo is still a talent. He can have some special games. But as you know, he can go on a run of not doing much. 
So that's but that, that's what you get from like smallish kind of attacking players. They have their days, they have their f- run of form, and yeah, of course they go on a run of maybe not playing as well. It's to be expected. Karuska this time. Oh, it's a goal! It is. It's John McCain. The experience, that's what I mean by the experience. We have a lot of younger types in the team, but John McCain, he's going to be an experienced uh, man down the back. You can see Ferguson actually got the header in there, and Bugard went in the slide. So it's all mix, all there. Uh, team goal, if you're ever going to get a team goal from a corner, uh, as much as you could there. So it's good to go ahead 2-0. This is a much better game, much better. We're actually playing better, regardless of the nature of the goals. We're actually looking like... A good team in this game. Oh, Ferguson played the ball for Sirio. Oh, he's going to make it three. That's the best. That is the best. Sublime Sergio Thirio. But the ball by Ferguson was class to set him up. But that finish. A perfect run as well. Everything about this piece of play was perfect. But that finish. That is world class from Sergio Thirio. That's what I want to see. Three nil. This is much better. Have to applaud that. Come on. Yeah, Ferguson, he looks at home. He looks at he doesn't look out of place for a young player. He looks like a first teamer. And what's the point of showing that? Yeah, that's what I mean with Ferguson. He looks good. He looks good early. But I've had players like that before as well. Has anyone else? Like you've had this region, he looks good. He has a good first appearance, but then the following appearances aren't as good. In the first season as well, because of course he's gonna get better. Syrio again. Whoa, so close. He actually had interest from a team. He almost left. An uh, offer was actually ex- accepted from... I nego- I was negotiating for quite some time and finally settled the deal for 400 k straight up for him. Uh, but they couldn't free up the funds. So he stayed. And luckily he did. I'm not sure who else would have been able to do a lob like that. Maybe Geronimo. But in that position, right wing, I'm not sure if Ferreira or someone like that could have done the same job. But saying that, I would have brought in another foreign player. But Ferguson is injured after starting very, very well with a 7.50 rating in his debut. That's a disappointment for him to go off because he was playing well. But I guess we'll bring in Billy Seleski. You know, he can do the job, definitely. So, yeah, de- he's probably better anyway. But Ferguson was having a good debut. Uh, definitely the fans uh, will be happy. I'll just say, show me what you got tonight. I just want a good display from Billy. And obviously, he won't be as a huge impact as he was last season. Because, of course, Seleski was playing in that AMC position as advanced play- playmaker. And now we have Ruben Rachina. So when Seleski plays, more of the, yeah, m- most of the time it will be that box-to-box midfielder. But don't forget, we do have that Ferguson guy there and also Jimmy Jego. There's a lot of players. And not to forget Carl Valeri. So there's a lot of players around that position. But that's what you need. That's what the best team have. P- really a challenge for spots in the team. You need that. And I'm surprised I could actually make that uh, with the salary cap. So I'm happy I could yeah, do that. Oh, Geronimo! That was on target, but just a bit tame there. Like, I feel I've built a really good squad. Especially with the salary cap. Look, I've built a good squad. Especially how I just fitted into the salary cap with my last signing of uh, the regen in Ferguson, who just got injured. Uh, just fit him into the salary cap. Oh, no, it's going to be a red. But we're winning 3-0. We'll just go defensive. Of course, it's disappointment. Uh, Marone pick up a second yellow. Uh, but as I said, we'll go defensive here. Make sure we hold on. Um, we'll go defend. And I'm not sure who to take off. I'll just take Geoff- yeah, take Geronimo. I'll put him right back. And then I'll just bring on Jack Hingett in his natural position. Just play defensive for the rest of the game. Uh, bring on Ziz. Uh, where, where should I bring him on? Um, I'll take off Karuska because he's the more attacking type. Yeah, that's best to do there. Just play a defensive game. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Bring on Jack. And Aziz, yeah, he'll come on. Faith in him. And we should be able to hold on. Yeah, playing on defensive. So here's a chance from the goal kick with Galekovic. We already made all the subs, so won't be able to do any more. You can see he made all subs there, three. Sirio gets past. Seleski. Rachina. 
Oh, Malik, he finds Seleski. And that was a poor finish. <laughs> See, we're playing on defensive and with a less man, and we create a chance. You've got to be happy about that. You know you're playing well when you can do that. And still maintaining, like, equal possession. Sure, it's hard to dominate solely, like, dominate heaps. But, yeah, we're holding our own there. And here's another goal kick from Galekovic. He's not too bad from the goal kicks. Uh, we win it here. Sirio, he always backtracks. I noticed from that, from him, uh, quite a lot. So he gets it again. He just, he gets heaps of it. <laughs> but maybe it's just a thing that my teammates, or my players, you know his quality and want to get it to him. And Seleski's had two chances now. Hasn't, maybe just yet, yeah, not as confident as last season. Of course, he was on form last season. Basically for the whole season. So he was playing on form and confidence. And now it's a new season. But yeah, this should be a morale boosting win. Uh oh, they've got a free kick. Scott Jamison. Oh, the ex-Adelaide man. He finishes. Might give them slight hope to get something from this game. But you can see there he's running funnily with the ball. But a good strike from him. He's a good set piece taker. But we shouldn't drop the points here. But here, another goal kick. See what we can do. Maybe just one more goal to kill it off. Oh, look at that passing. You have Regina in there. He cool. He just makes it nice and cool. Oh, Siri, that's a red. By Jamison. He just scored and then he picked up a red. He's off. So, yeah, basically, the points are ours now. Two minutes remaining. They're not going to score two in that time. It's done and dusted. Just off this throw, Aziz Bayic. Should be done. Time over now? It is. <laughs> come on, that's exactly what we needed to come back after the first uh, first loss in the first game. Uh, Sirio was insane. Had a great game. Ricky Ferguson as well. Uh, until he got injured, he was having... A really good debut. So, yeah, definitely uh, bright signs. So, yeah, that was 3-1. And that puts us in a third position. That's a better position to be in now. So, we'll leave with that for now. Hopefully, you enjoyed this episode. If you want to see some more, uh, drop a like. And I'll try and upload the next episode very, very soon. I'll see you guys then.